So today we're going to talk about allergies and intolerances and the differences between the two and why that's important to understand in a school setting. In this training, we're going to cover what a food allergy and a food intolerance are, um, basic tips for handling allergies and intolerances, how to read a label, and then the difference between cross-contact and cross-contamination, and the steps that we can all take to create a safe environment for students. Food allergies and intolerances are physiological responses to foods within the human body that can range from mild and uncomfortable, like digestive symptoms, um, to life-threatening and the most serious allergic reactions like anaphylaxis. Um, so allergies and intolerances are often confused, but there are key differences with how the body responds in each and how they should be handled. A food allergy is more severe than a food intolerance because it involves an immune reaction to a specific protein in food. So in a food allergy, a person's immune system will identify an allergen as something that's foreign and not supposed to be there. So it will produce antibodies to trigger an allergic reaction. And they can range in severity. So some people might have a milder allergy and maybe they can be around some allergen but just can't consume it without symptoms. Whereas someone else might have a peanut allergy to the point that they can't even breathe in peanuts without having a response. So it's important to understand the level of severity. The symptoms of an allergic reaction can manifest differently in different people. So some people might experience digestive symptoms like vomiting or cramping. Hives are another common symptom, and those can result in skin breakouts that might appear one to two hours after the food has been consumed. And then some of the more severe symptoms are difficulty breathing, throat tightening, and anaphylaxis. So those are the ones to really look out for because they can have life-threatening consequences. More than 170 foods have been found to cause an allergic reaction in some people, but nine foods account for 90% of all allergic reactions to food, and those are listed there in those image. So those are recognized as the big nine by the FDA. Um, sesame was the most recently added one and any of these nine allergens are required to be listed on a food label. Here are just a few facts about food allergies in the United States. Up to 15 million Americans have food allergies, and about one in every 13 children in the U.S. have a food allergy. That's about two in every classroom, and the cost of children's food allergies is about $25 billion per year. And then among kids with food allergies, 16 to 18% have experienced a reaction at school. So that's why it's important for us to be prepared. Kids with allergies are more vulnerable to other health complications, so things like asthma and additional food allergies, compared with kids who do not have any food allergies. Um, and then it's also important to note that most reactions to foods occur in the classroom and not in the cafeteria. So that's typically in settings where food's being served that's out of the norm. Um, it might not be labeled appropriately or the kid might not think to speak up about an allergy. Um, and then also a significant proportion of reactions occur in kids who don't know they have an allergy. So that's why it's good to know the signs of an allergic reaction to be on the lookout. It's also important to note in the classroom setting that allergens could be found in places other than food. So things like classroom supplies and crafts and things like that um, could have allergens hidden in them. So things like modeling clay, paper mache, crayons, shaving cream, finger paint, soaps, um, pest management solutions, they could all contain allergens and other things as well. So it's important to read labels. Um, be aware of things that might be risky, and then to look up anything that you have a question about. Moving on from food allergies, a food intolerance is not an immune response, but it's typically a difficulty with digesting a certain food. So it affects the digestive system and the symptoms can manifest as gas, bloating, or diarrhea. 
three of the most common food intolerances are lactose, casein, and gluten. So lactose and casein are both components of milk, but they're separate. So if someone has a lactose intolerance, then they could maybe drink lactose-free milk. Um, but if someone had an intolerance to casein, then that wouldn't be an appropriate solution. So it's good to understand the specifics of each child's needs. Food intolerances are more common than food allergies, and about one in five people around the world has a food intolerance. And these can result from different things, including the lack of an enzyme, like not having lactase to digest lactose, um, sensitivity to food additives, reactions to chemicals in food, um, among other things. And often people with an intolerance can eat small amounts of the food without having problems or um, maybe having minimal symptoms, which differs from a food allergy where um, a little bit of the food may trigger an allergic reaction. One of the most common allergies and intolerances you hear about is gluten and wheat. And there's an important distinction between a wheat allergy, gluten intolerance, and celiac disease, although they are sometimes confused. So a wheat allergy is an immune reaction um, to the presence of wheat, and then it follows the same path as other allergies by producing antibodies that can trigger an allergic reaction. And conversely, a gluten intolerance is difficulty digesting gluten, um, and that results in digestive symptoms. So someone might have um, stomach pain or bloating or just some unpleasant results from that, um, but it's not an allergic reaction with an intolerance, and so they could still consume gluten, um, but just might have some side effects with it. And then celiac disease is a serious autoimmune condition um, in which ingesting gluten can damage the small intestine. Um, so there are important differences between these three terms. Two other conditions that are often confused are lactose intolerance and a dairy allergy. So lactose intolerance is an inability to digest lactose, um, which again can result in digestive symptoms, and that's from an enzyme deficiency. Whereas a dairy allergy is an immune reaction to a protein in dairy that can trigger an allergic reaction. So if a child has a lactose intolerance, they may be able to drink lactose-free milk. Uh, but a child with a dairy allergy would not, so it's an important thing to keep in mind. Here are just a few quick tips for handling food allergies. It's good to know the severity of any kid's allergies so that you can plan accordingly, and then also to be aware of the signs of an allergic reaction and monitor kids while they're eating, and then prepare for emergencies by having all the necessary supplies on hand. And then ensure a safe eating environment and ensure that anywhere that food is prepared is clean and encourage kids to hand wash before and after they eat and then also clean surfaces to prevent cross contact and don't allow kids to share food because that can be an easy way for someone to share food and not be totally sure what it is or what's in it and then that could trigger an allergic reaction and then it's also good to make a plan for special events and if any food is brought in make sure that it um, has the ingredients clearly listed so that it can be affirmed to be safe. Allergies and intolerances must be documented on a unique mealtime need or UMN form that's signed off by a medical professional. And then all people involved in the care of that student will need to monitor food choices and intake based on their documented needs and acknowledge that every situation is different. When it comes to dealing with allergies and intolerances, food labels are your friends. So if you see here in this picture, it says contains wheat, soy, egg, and milk ingredients. So for any of those nine main allergens, food manufacturers are required to list if a food contains them, so it's very helpful for a kid with one of those allergies. They can look on the label and it will be listed clearly. There's also statements that a product may contain something or is made on equipment that also makes products containing a certain allergen. So again, depending on the severity of the allergy, a child may be able to consume one of those categories but not another. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. 
cross-contact and cross-contamination are two terms that are tossed around a lot when it comes to allergens and food safety, and there are key differences between the two. So cross-contact is in reference to an allergen, so it's when an allergen is accidentally transferred from a food containing an allergen to a food or surface that does not contain the allergen. So if someone is making peanut butter sandwiches on a cutting board and then turns around and using that, that cutting board for chopping vegetables without washing it and there's still wheat on there, that would be an example of cross-contact. Um, whereas cross-contamination is not in reference to allergens but instead microorganisms. So microorganisms from different sources might contaminate foods during preparation and storage. If issues or concerns arise around allergies or intolerances, it's good to know the policies in place. So if a student has an allergy or an intolerance, they must have a UMN form on which it's documented. And what's listed there must be followed precisely, even if a student or parent says that something has changed or that the form's not right anymore. Um, documented foods must be avoided um, until a note from a doctor is received. Um, and then if a student or parent has further questions, those can be directed to the school nutrition supervisor or to a registered dietitian on staff. While a child is at school, it's important for everyone involved in their care and supervision to be aware of any allergies or intolerances um, and to work together to ensure a safe environment at school. Just to sum up the key points so far, um, food allergies are an immune response to an allergen in food, while food intolerances are difficulty digesting a certain food. Allergies are typically more severe than intolerances, but symptoms can vary between the two from person to person. And then it's important for everyone to collaborate with the student, parents, and other school staff to ensure that mealtimes are safe and enjoyable for all students. Thank you.